book. It does be sad like that. I've got a book, as it happens. My book is called Jerry Sweeney's Mammy. Okay? And it is available in Waterstones, down the road. It's also available in my local library back in Ireland, in Newbridge. And it's also available in Farrell and Nephews in Newbridge. And you might not that, think that that's a big deal. It's a big deal to me. When I was nine, I was highly dyslexic. Nothing's really changed there. I might just be dyslexic now, but back at nine I couldn't read and I determined to teach myself to read. I used to walk four miles into Newbridge, go into Farrell's, the bookshop, <coughs> and ask for, can I, ten-year-old asking for, can I have Sam Beckett, uh, Virginia Woolf to the, to the lighthouse? And Henry uh, McNeese collected works that Mr. Farrell told me to look down and said, are you sure, little boy? <laughs> you want these? And I was going, yes, yes, I'm really sure. So he used to get them in for me, and before the internet, he was my internet. Uh, so for this to be available in Farrell and Nephew uh, is a really nice thing for me. Sort of like full circle, come back and bring the poems back into the shop. And he started me off, if I wanted Louis Magnus, he got me Louis Magnus. I'd read all of Beckett, uh, and by the time Sam won the Nobel Prize in 1969, I knew all about him. So Jerry Sweeney's man, ah lord. We launched this up in uh, the Poetry Cafe, along with five other of our stable mates. Um, you might see me peeping out there. Uh, they are simply my markers. You wonder how I choose which poem to read. Uh, they all jump up like that and go, me, 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 oh please, me. So that's how you decide. But I'm not going to read from that. I'm going to read from this. So this is called Prayer and it's for Rexen. The tree lifted its arms to the skies, prayed for hours. It offered up all its leaves that lay scattered at its feet, like a woman stepping out of a yellow dress. Birds came, came and sang in all the branches, as if they were leaves of living song. As we left, it wore a sunset, and the birds had become stars. Oh, thank you. And then, I know it's a bit early, uh, this is like how they make Christmas programs on TV. They film them in July and put them out at Christmas, so this is a Christmas poem. It's called After the Row. Built an over-large snowman on your front doorstep and hid behind it. Rang your doorbell until you were annoyed by it. Yes, yes, you flung the door open to be confronted with a snowman telling you he loved you, until slowly your heart began to melt. <laughs> to add a Shakespearean note, this is called to woof, or not to woof. Depends on you. There wasn't a word out of the room. The furniture was silent, didn't say anything at all. A drunken chair... Uh, leaned over and touched the floor with an arm. Say, look, he's not, he's too drunk. A tipsy table stood up on its hind legs, looking very, very guilty at being caught thus. The books ran all about the floor like birds that couldn't fly. A glass looked shattered. Milk raced across the lino. Whoa, whoa, barked Hamlet the Great Dane trying to look innocent, lifting his leg, peeing copiously against the wallpaper roses. <laughs> we go back to my beloved sister Judy, and this is called Skin and Blister, which is of course Cockney Rhyme and Slam for Sister. We grin and grimace, drop candle wax onto our fingertips as the storm rattles our window pane, angry that we won't let it in. All night it rages, toppling chimney pots with a crash, smashing slates it strips from rooftops, as we safe giggle and peel off our waxed fingerprints, hold them tiny whirlpools in our palms, those whirls of self unique to each, I wearing my sister's fingerprints, she wearing mine. <laughs> and to get to Christmas Day. Oh, God. It was Sunday, December the 25th. His eyes lay on the ground, his smile scattered all around, 
A curious crow was picking his nose. His nose had become the orange vegetable it was. No, not Donald Trump. The orange veg vegetable it was before it was his nose. His bubble hat drowned in a puddle. The sun shone innocent as anything. My snowman was dead. I snatched up his hat, which only yesterday was mine. I left the carrot to the curious crow. His eyes, dark as coal, followed me as I walked away, trying not to cry, but crying. Thank you.